Hi, I'm Mara Webster with In Creative Company, and today we're talking about the wonderful film Unseen with cast members Midori Francis and Jolene Prodi, along with director Yoko Okamura. And Yoko, starting with you, I wanted to talk a little bit about how you found the film tonally as a director, because you've created this wonderful space in which the situations that the lead character Emily finds herself in are very heightened for her world, and yet you've told the story in a way that allows for it to step into those places, but feels very grounded and centralized through character. But then even allows for moments of comedy where the audience can take a breath so it never feels claustrophobic in the viewing experience and so I was really fascinated in how you started working with the script to really find the path to that specific mix of tones. Yeah um, from the very beginning me and my team knew that the tone was going to be a challenge because you know we never wanted to trivialize the real mortal you know danger that Emily was going through and with the you know physical violence that was being threatened against her so but you know we start on Sam's side a little bit lighter like she also has threats in her life but it's not as like physical and immediate so for us it was really a challenge of um you know making sure that both worlds were introduced right away and it never was like we were in one tone and then like you know eventually like blasted the other tone onto the other um onto the audience as well as a surprise um but ultimately it really was like making sure i was communicated to you know jolene and midori that like for them the the danger is real there the stakes are high and the and they should just be able to react to it as realistically and as groundedly as like they see fit for themselves um and then i think i gave them a heads up that like the villains might be a little bit more wilder like the tone of the the whole world might be a little bit louder and like slightly above reality but i just you know i think the most important thing was that again the our two main characters felt they're they're grounded and they they were afraid of the real situations um and that that was like i think the the most uh like that was the key ingredient making the multiple tones actually feel cohesive and um yeah and, and grounded she did. Really, she did she did say all that that's yeah. amazing and in Majori, for you, I was interested in how you went into those first few scenes of, of shooting with your character, because in essence, your response and your perspective in those scenes is what gives the audience um, a, an insight into what this relationship was was like and what the emotional difficulties of that space had been for her that she'd been in, the way that she responds the moment she wakes up and sees her ex-boyfriend, the fear that she's existing in kind of gives us more of a window into it. And so how did you set about creating that space of what the dynamic of this relationship had been, even though we're not specifically seeing that time on screen with the two of you, because we're at a much later point in their dynamic. Yes. Um, so I think I remember that Yoko and I went to dinner and we talked a bit about just abusive relationships in general. Um, and I think the reality of that relationship was not lost on me of like what that looked like. Now, I think what was easier was that like the circumstances were, were already built in the script. For example, like, I don't care who your ex was. If you wake up in a cabin and you're broke up and then you're there, that's horrifying. Right. But I think all the details and the specificity of what their relationship was, um, was, you know, something that Yoko and I talked about that, you know, I know that you guys had finessed with the script of like the type of person Charlie was. I think that helped who Emily was, you know, like hearing how he talked, how it's always about himself. You know, a lot of that work honestly was done for me. Um, but what I, what I loved was like, we found little moments, I think with, I don't know if you remember this, the way I do Yoko, but like, it was like, we we're like managing anger a lot. Cause like, I was angry a lot of the time because I was like in that situation and that's my kind of go-to thing. And so we were like managing, like, when is that okay versus when am I kind of sweet talking him? When do you see, like, you know, like, cause there's little moments of smiles in there. Cause like Yoko was reminding me like, you know, what do you want in this scene? And like, this is a moment where I'm making him think like, maybe I'm going to work it out, you know? And then what I really loved is in that scene with me and Charlie by the cliff was like, it kind of reads as just like a relationship scene, like two people fighting in a relationship. Like, you know, like, like, yeah, he's going to kill me, but we become Emily and Charlie, like who maybe we were, how we thought. Um, so I think that was really cool and helped kind of shape up. Like maybe we had a fight like that in the kitchen one time. I mean, not at that stakes, but yeah. Yeah. 
No, I, lo- I love that level of detail. And and Jolene, for you, I mean, you've crafted this really beautiful arc into a character where when we meet her at the beginning of the film, she's in a, a space of really not feeling like she has self-worth in the world and she doesn't have that internal validation. And, and we see that even in the way that she berates herself and talks to herself out loud when she thinks she's made a mistake. And then by the end, we really find her in this place of, of self-confidence in a completely different sphere, even though it's only been over the course of a few hours for her. It's it's such a such a monumental shift for her to go through within herself and you've created it in a way that it feels so nuanced and so gradual and so earned at every moment and so I was interested in how you really work scene by scene to kind of calibrate through a journey like that for your character. Oh my gosh that's so kind thank you. Um, So for me I approach a character and I try to see where in my life what channel of my own being I can tap into that that character relates to and so for me I have a five-year-old but when she was born supposed to be the most joyous time in my life. I had postpartum depression. I felt so heavy. I felt so hopeless. I felt like useless. Like it would be better if I wasn't here for her, you know, and that heaviness that I lived with for 18 months, I didn't really say I love you to my child until she was 18 months old. That is where Sam is. And she can have good good times, but like they're fleeting. And so I, I just really carried that struggle and that journey that I had, um, during postpartum depression into it. And I really felt like it was a fight at every turn to try and find the positive, to try and pull myself up. And I think that that's what, you know, Emily helps Sam do is she helps find, helps Sam find her value that even as dark as it is, that you still are of value. Really, really appreciate that. And, and and Yoko, I also wanted to ask you about some of the visual elements of the film, because you've kind of found a way in which these two characters are physically in different locations, but they feel so connected and, and even more visually so on screen as they start to kind of really open up and start to really trust in, and build this connectivity with one another. And there's various things at play from the placement of the camera to the use of split screen, and even just the way that you've really thoughtfully filmed, okay, how are we going to approach having FaceTime on camera in a way that doesn't feel like it's just a gimmick or a trip trick, but really feels like this a centralized part of their lives and this connection that's building in their communication. Um, and so what was the starting point for you in really looking at the different ways that you could use visual mediums to build that into the film? Yeah, you know, from the very beginning when I read the script, even to pitch to it, um, to pitch to direct it, I was like, okay, watching two people talking on FaceTime for, you know, over an hour could become very tedious. So from the very beginning, as I was pitching, I was like, I'm going to make this the most like visually exciting, you know, cinematic language that connects these two people as much as we can on screen. And then from there, it was really just like, you know what? These two actors are have so much chemistry. Like no matter what I did, they brought the chemistry. So all I really had to do is make sure again, the camera was accentuating and supporting what they were bringing. So yeah, if, if it's even if it's like, you know, um, a split screen where they're both talking to each other and they're walking and talking, you know, we do a steady cam shot that follows both of them. But then as they're connecting and as they're connecting in their conversation and emotionally getting on the same plane, you know, both of the cameras come around. So they're actually facing each other in the split screen and talking to one another. So it was things like that, that we were just like, okay, how can we actually connect the two worlds together? Whether it's, you know, one motion going into the other um, other split screen on the other side, or whether it's match cuts. Um, how can we make these two separate worlds feel like, you know, the same uh, universe and like that they are, we are um, visually connected with their emotional connection. That's so great. And and off the back of that as well, Midori and Jolene, what were the aspects at play for both of you in terms of building this rapport and building this dynamic and, you know, really finding those adjustments as they open up more to one another with the fact that you're never actually in a scene together. You're never on screen physically alongside each other as scene partners. And yet you've built this really cohesive and kind of flourishing friendship between these two women. You hear that, Jolene? We got chemistry. <laughs> yeah, we um, do. um yeah why don't you go I feel like we were in the scenes together people keep saying how hard was it for you guys to have the chemistry not being with each other we were with each other 
probably like more off camera than even on camera. <laughs> camera. Um, I was like ducking into bushes, dodging <laughs> fighters while Midori was climbing sandy cliffs and like killing it repeatedly. <laughs> Um, and then she was, you know, laying on the floor, tucking in behind the cash register as I was like sweating and bleeding, like having panic attacks. We were there for each other. And I think that's what the, the chemistry was, was just the res mutual respect and admiration that we had for each other personally. Yeah, it was amazing working together. Um, there's a funny bit in one of our like behind the scenes videos where Jolene's talking about, she's like, yeah, like I came early to, which was the most amazing gift that she could have given the entire production because she flew out early before she was even filming just to be there. And so we could do the scenes together. And I honestly don't think, I know for a fact, like my, my performance wouldn't be what it was without that. And um, I don't think the movie would have because you got to bring you into it. We needed you. We needed both of us. And I don't even think until like looking back, it's like, oh, well, thank God you did that. Um, but uh, there's a funny bit where Jolene's like, yeah, you know, like I, I they're like, do you want to come be the reader? And I was like, yeah, like she came in this cute sweatsuit and she was like, I'm going to be sipping my coffee in Video Village with my little microphone. And then it just cuts to Jolene, like literally behind a tree, um, which is like, Emily. <laughs> And it's like, I don't think that, because it's just the way it happened, like with sound, like she ended up, ha so anytime you see me trudging through a field, Jolene was also trudging through the field um, when it was like 30 degrees at night, I'm crying for my mom, Jolene was right there, also crying, you know, yeah, it was, it was, we, we built all of that together, so, you know, that was awesome. Was, was that something you knew early on, Yoko, that it was kind of important to have the two of them physically present for each other a lot of times throughout filming? Because it sounds like that made such a difference for both of them. Yeah, you know, I think we had some conversations as far as, you know, oh, maybe they could be on FaceTime together talking. But it was quickly clear that the technicalities in that was just going to be really um, detrimental and that it was just going to be better to have them there like they were both shooting at the whole entire time of the movie. So early on, again, I think even from the very beginning when you know we were talking early on, even um, at, right after they were cast, I think it was presented to both of them, like, will you be there for each other? Are you willing, you know? And they both were just like so generous of the, yeah, being there, even when they weren't on camera to be there for each other as scene partners. So it was very early on that it was very clear that um, we wanted to, to shoot it this way. I, Midori, you also have the additional very unique challenge with the fact that you're never kind of really making direct eye contact with anyone throughout the film because your character is, you know, <laughs> on, <laughs> on the verge of not being able to see anything at all. You know, we see that through the perspective of the camera, how terrible her eyesight is without her glasses that she doesn't have throughout the film. And that obviously being the reason she needs audio guidance throughout and so what was that dynamic for you where even when you're in scenes with people you're kind of like not making direct eye contact and you're really kind of never looking directly at your surroundings as you're navigating through them that is such a good point yeah there was no eye contact because I also filmed the movie without my well not all of it I don't know producers but I, I filmed some of the movie without my contacts in um, because I have bad eyesight and it really helped in a lot of ways. So yeah, there were some scenes, even when I was with Carly that I, you know, it wasn't the clearest. Um, it was weird, man. Definitely weird. Like I felt at times, like my scene partners were very much obviously Jolene, but it felt like the, it felt like Jolene, but kind of like the ghost of Jolene. Cause I couldn't really look at her and she was kind of like this God voice with me. And then there was just like trees and sand. And, you know, I have to say, I, I did enjoy that aspect um, with having Jolene there, but like also working with trees and sand because after coming from sound stages, which are great, but there's so much more pretending you have to do and like work to put into like kind of ignoring that fourth wall. And what was such a gift to me was like, oh, there was no fourth wall. Like it was like, like it was like a cameraman, Yoko's spirit and voice, Jolene's spirit and voice, and just like dirt and water and like, <laughs> drops and like branches and and so it was easy I guess in a way it was easier to play pretend it was if I felt like sometimes like a little kid running around playing pretend you know 
And, and Yoko, I also wanted to ask you about the production design, particularly for the gator themed gas station that, that Sam works out of, because I love, you know, even as you hone in the fact that there's these kind of like fake trees growing out of the shelves at the back and, you know, the, the, the green that's very much like the blazer you're wearing now and kind of like the hues of pink, like really give it such a distinctive visual style in a way that really stands mm -hmm. out and goes back to what you were saying about the external circumstances being able to be the more heightened elements. And I feel like that's one way in which you've encapsulated that and so where did the genesis of that color palette and those visuals come from for you oh well i mean i would say there's like a personal like preference genesis that came from the specific color palette um but uh i <laughs> selfishly um but no I just knew, you know, like I'm, I'm like a little moth to the flame. Like I love colors and I love spectacle. I love glitter. I love neon. And so for me, again, a part of making this movie about two people on a phone, exciting and fun to watch was like creating this artificial environment to be as artificial and, you know, kitschy and strange as possible. Because I think originally it was scripted to be a dingy gas station, but like a normal dingy gas station. And it was me who was just like, I want Mountain Dew green and Pepto-Bismol pink. Like, let's put murals on the wall and bring like plastic trees in here. And like, so for me, it was just like my own little like Disneyland that I was creating. Um, and yeah, and it was it was just so much fun. And, and to me, again, it was to make sure like you were, I'm so glad that you noticed the trees in there. Like, that again, when you look at Midori, when you look at Jolene and both of their frames, that there's actually something similar to them, like subconsciously. Um, I wanted to bring them into each other's worlds that way. So yes, yeah, Emily is surrounded by the real forest, but Jolene is surrounded by a fake forest. Um, and um, yeah, it was really fun to do that. And I think even with the villains, you know, it's really small details, but you know, the, the color of Charlie's car is like a coral red. I took that photo of that car and sent it to the nail artist who did uh, Missy Pyle's nails. So I connected the villains with a color palette as well. Like it's subtle, but it's there. One of my other favorite details was the, the gun that Missy Pyle has that just says hers on the side of it. <laughs> yes, I'm so glad you noticed. If you look closely, his gun also says his on it. So it's a his and hers gun combo. <laughs> Amazing. Oh, and did you know that there were trees? Sorry. I like that there was also a forest. Yeah, over by the slushy machine, but I never connected that that's what was happening. I just yeah, that's so brilliant. Yeah. Love it. Love it. Yes. Yeah, there's some frames, especially when Jolene is um at, at the window looking outside the gas station at J mid uh, at um Missy, there's like you know, forest kind of in her the foreground of your shot. And I'm like, yeah, it kind of looks like Midori's shots when there's like leaves in her foreground. Yeah, that was I would say that was the coolest thing, honestly, of this whole process was well, actually, everything was cool. I really liked filming it, but a an additional reward after you're wrapped because usually after you're wrapped, it's just it can just be stressful, frankly, like the whole process of everything. But was seeing that first cut and being like, oh, my God, because you have to understand, like we were in our own movies doing our thing, thinking we're in one movie. And then I knew about Yoko's ideas, but then honest, like no, no bullshit to see what she did with this and to see like somehow this color thing. It was more than a color thing. It was like the like vibrancy and energy. And then like seeing how she straddled the line between the humor and all like. And then also it felt like a punk rock album to me. I don't know. It, that was to me like one of the coolest parts was the director actor experience of being like, this is what happens when you put something in the hands of somebody with a clear vision, who's excited, who who stops at no ends to get what she wants um, for, for her vision um, with the help of, of Blumhouse and everyone. And yeah, I don't know. I When I first watched it, I was just like, I had no idea that it was going to be like this. Same, 100% same. Like, just from the second that I met Yoko in callbacks, I was like, she knows what she wants. And I, I want to do this with her. Like, I see her vision. I get it now. Yeah. I mean, that's such, such a great point about like the, the clarity of vision in it. And you really feel that in the experience of watching it. So congratulations on everything with this movie. And thank you so much to all three of you. Really appreciate your time today.